Hello there, my fishy friends. My name is Peter, and today we're going to talk about first light fishing. So I'm going to start off by covering the fishing regulations that relate to first light fishing. Then I'm going to talk about first light fishing etiquette, and then I'm going to talk about actual first light fishing techniques that will help you maximize the number of fish you can catch at first light. So what is first light? First light is, is pretty much you know, people have different definitions of it, but the way I see it, the first light is that 15 minutes of light in the morning when it's kind of gray and you can just barely see your float. That's what I call first light. So um, it's not just early in the morning. It's that first actual little bit of light. And in Region 2, British Columbia, we're allowed to start fishing one hour before official sunrise. So, one hour before official sunrise is different every single day. You have to look it up. So, when you can check on the weather network, that will give you a sunrise and a sunset, and those are actually the official times. So, for example, today, Sunrise was at 7.20, so we're allowed to start fishing at 6.20. Casting into a really narrow eddy over there. It really takes more concentration than I'm giving it talking to you guys. I'm probably going to lose some gear in the trees over there. Anyway. Uh, so back to fishing regulations, so uh, we're allowed to start fishing one hour, so 7.20 sunrise today, 6.20 you're allowed to start casting. We're going to talk later about whether it's a good idea to actually start casting at 6.20 or whether it's maybe a better idea to wait until you can see and the fish can see. Uh, the other fishing regulation that relates to first light is uh, the, the fishing regulation states you're not allowed to use light to attract fish unless it's attached to your line within one meter of the hook. So that regulation is designed to prevent pit lamping. So it's designed to prevent people from building large bonfires next to the water and attracting fish that way. It's designed to prevent people from shining a, a bright lamp into the water and using it to find the fish and uh, make them bite or attract them before there is proper light for the fish to see. So what comes up quite often, and not everybody understands this, is um, are you then allowed to use a glow stick on the float? And there are some people here on the vetter who are convinced that glow sticks on the float are illegal and they'll yell at people for using them. Well, it's not actually true. I've double checked on this with conservation officers. The trouble is conservation officers have varying opinions on this too. But the regulation as it's written says you're not allowed to attract fish with a light. A little glow stick or indicator on your float isn't attracting the fish. So, you know, be it as it as it may, maybe some people don't like it because it's not the way their dad did it and that's not the way they grew up. Doesn't mean that it's actually illegal. And I say that because I sometimes use glow sticks. Not all the time. Some mornings I do, some mornings I don't. And I've, I've done my homework, I've double checked, I've read the regulations and you know, I want you guys to know what I know. Uh, you can leave a comment about how you hate glow sticks and when people use them. Uh, for me, it does two things. It's, one, it allows me to start fishing just a little bit earlier. And, I, you know, I only have usually an hour or an hour and a half before I have to go to work. So being able to start fishing kind of 10 minutes earlier makes a difference. But I have to admit, I'm very rarely successful at catching a fish while it's still dark. Like today, I got one this morning at uh, 6.30, so about 10 minutes after first light. And I had to turn my headlamp on to land the fish because I couldn't see it to get it into the net. It was that dark. So this morning it worked, but the majority of the time it doesn't. It, it really is not a great benefit to start fishing 10 minutes earlier. I know, I know, I keep talking, but I gotta watch my float too. <laughs> So yeah, 
those are the regulations. So let's talk about etiquette. First of all, you have to realize that for first light fishing, some people get up really early to make sure that they're getting the spot that they want. So if first light is at 6.20 today, there will be some people who have been standing at the river since 5 o'clock in the dark, biding their time, just so they get their spot. So when you show up at 6.15, don't expect them to be happy about you crowding in six feet from them. So uh, first light fishing, if you show up late and the pattern is full, you go to the end of the run. You don't try and squeeze in in between people somewhere. It's just common sense. Uh, it should be that way during the day too, but it's especially important at first light because you're really going to make people grumpy if you crowd them when they got up extra early to be there. Some of them have maybe driven from Vancouver and it's, it's just polite. The other thing that's polite is not to ruin the night vision of the people across the river from you. So when you show up to your spot, Headlamps with the LEDs are super bright these days and if you're shining your lamp across the river you're blinding the people on the other side. People that maybe you don't even see, they've been standing there in the dark minding their business and you show up and you blind everybody so it's, it's common sense and common courtesy. If you need your headlamp or something like you, you need to tie up or, or get your gear ready you turn away from the river, you turn your headlamp on you do your thing, turn your headlamp off, and then you turn around, and then you're ready to start fishing. So that about covers it for etiquette. Um, it really varies from spot to spot based on the experience level of the people who frequent that spot, how things go at first light. So when you show up to some spots, it's like a carnival scene. People are lighting fires, Headlamps everywhere, sometimes somebody's got music playing, lots of talking, lots of commotion. And that's fine, you know, if everybody's doing it, there's nothing wrong with that except for it's spooking the fish that are sitting six feet from the bank. And you're there specifically to get the fish when they're arrested. So when you show up to a spot and it's a bunch of experienced coho hunters, it is a different story. Everybody's standing there quietly in the dark like a bunch of ghosts in the dark you don't you know sometimes you show up you don't even notice that there's people already on the run they're just they're ready but they're standing there and and making sure the fish aren't spooked and it's a whole different atmosphere and so you kind of want to be respectful of that if everybody else is being sneaky and quiet and standing there in the dark with their lamps off you should probably try and do the same. You know, you show up with your two buddies and you start a party, it's not going to make you popular at that spot. So that covers etiquette. I think that's probably enough. You know, just common sense stuff. Let's talk about why first light fishing works so well. So on a river that's as heavily fished as the better, the coho gets super picky, like they, they really don't like biting very much until you get those, you know, dirty water days and, and overcast days and the rainy days. Sometimes they'll bite all day or they'll bite intermittently. So they won't bite for like a half an hour and then they'll turn on for 10 minutes. It can happen, but there is a really reliable bite every day at first light. You get anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour where you just get lots of bites, no matter what you're tossing, beads, row, anything you throw in there, your float starts going down and it's pretty exciting, but pretty quickly those fish turn off. So that's the first light bite. That's why everybody's there. And that first light bite happens because the fish are rested. They, they haven't been targeted and pressured. They haven't seen a bunch of gear. Sometimes you get new fish that have just shown up in the river and they haven't experienced all the fishing pressure yet. So the other thing is that at dawn is when coho are used to feeding. So coho, I've mentioned this in my other video about why coho bite. Coho are pelagic fish. They live in the open ocean. And what happens in the open ocean is um, there's plankton on the surface. And every night under the cover of darkness, 
all the bait fish and squid and shrimp and everything migrates from hundreds of feet deep from the dark it migrates up to the surface and at dawn when they are first starting to see the coho are underneath those bait fish and they're smashing them so a coho has eaten breakfast every day at dawn for most of its life and that makes them bitey at dawn it really does So yeah, so you got a double whammy. The fish are rested and the fish are used to eating at that time of day and, and it's a very reliable bite. How long it lasts is different every day. This morning, I got a, my first fish I got at about 6.30. It was still too dark to see, really. 6.20 was our official start time. 6.30 I got my first fish. Uh, then I got about five more bites that I missed, two fish that I lost. Uh, then I landed uh, a little jack, and then by about 6.45, the bite was over. I, you know, So you're going from like having a bite every five minutes to none, like none for the rest of the morning. It, it really is uh, kind of a, a morning bite and disappears. So how can you use that to your advantage? Well, it's, you want to be ready. You want to be ready at the right time. You want to be standing there waiting for the first gray light and you want to start fishing close so when you get there there will be some fish like coho are short they, they like conserving energy they like the slower shallower water and first thing in the morning not everywhere but in many spots they'll be in knee deep water six or ten feet from the bank and so like a rod length out you can catch your first coho so when it first starts getting light, when you first start being able to see your float, fish that close water first. And that also keeps you from getting tangled with other people on the other side. There's really nothing worse than, you know, you're trying to fish your spot and all of a sudden somebody starts lobbing stuff from way on the other side. You can't really see where their float is. And yeah, it's a mess. So when you first start fishing, that's kind of more etiquette, but it's also good common sense fish close in the dark fish right in front of you only as far as you can see or float don't fish by feel like halfway across the river uh, that first light bite isn't really in the dark like I often use glow sticks because I get bored right and we're allowed to start fishing 620 um, today it's different every day I have to look at that official sunrise I don't want to mislead anybody um, so I only have an hour and a half to fish in the morning before I have to head to work. And I get bored standing there and I often put on a, a little glow stick as an indicator and I start fishing, but it's very rarely successful. Uh, that first light bite doesn't really happen until the fish can see your presentation silhouetted against the lightning sky. And by that time, most of the days you can clearly see your float. So you don't need to rush into it. First light get a bunch of really experienced people at the run nobody wants to make that first cast everybody kind of waits politely and, and they wait as long as possible and then if everybody starts kind of in the gray light usually the first few casts somebody gets a fish on it's, it's pretty reliable so for first light if you don't want to use glow sticks because they are controversial I've been yelled at for using glow sticks even though it's perfectly legal. The other thing glow sticks do for me is I don't have other people casting across my line nearly as much. So if you don't want to use a glow stick, try one of these yellow top floats. So yellow top floats, you can see those roughly 10 minutes sooner than a red top float. In During the day, the orange is better, but during the early morning light, that yellow really pops and you can see it up against the water. Um, the other thing to do is first thing in the morning I usually upsize my gear so this is like a daytime bead it's about a 10 millimeter this one might even be bigger I don't know I get them all from the river so I don't actually know the sizes but at first light I would go like 30% bigger because when it's still too dark for the fish to see something a little brighter a little shinier is likely to get their attention so first thing in the morning I do slightly bigger blobs of row and I do slightly bigger beads and it works. You know, like, you know the, the jack I caught today, I can't believe he was able to get that glob of row in his mouth. 
<laughs> I was fishing a big chunk and I got this little fish on there. So upsize, start shallow, work your way deeper and be ready to like if you lose your gear first thing you really want to have some pre-tied leaders so it only takes you a minute or two to get ready for the next cast because if you're not ready at first light and you're having to mess with your gear and you have to tie up hooks and tie up leaders and you know redo it the first light bite sometimes it's only like 15 minutes long you don't want to be spending five minutes of that tying up stuff so what I do is I have a swivel snap on the front uh, underneath my lead and the swivel snap goes to a regular swivel that's on my leader so I show up with like three or four leaders pre-tied so that if I lose my gear in a tree or between the rocks I just snap a new leader on and I'm ready to go in 30 seconds and I'm not wasting that valuable first light time um, that about covers my fishing tips. You know, you, you get there early, you're gonna get the bites, and uh, it took me quite a few years to figure that out. It took me a lot of years to figure out that it pays to be quiet and sneaky at first light, so to not, you know, have loud cast and a whole bunch of splashing in the water. It took me a while to figure out that you don't want to wade out first thing. The fish are there knee deep. If you wade out knee deep, you're literally stepping on the fish that you're trying to catch and you're spooking them and you're chasing them into deeper water before you've even started fishing. Um, it also, generally speaking, it is better to wait until that gray light to even start casting. I kind of ignore my own advice there. Even though it's not really productive, I like having something to do and I just want to start casting. So don't hold it against me. That's the way I fish. Um, Really, it's not productive very often. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but in maybe one in 10 mornings, I'll catch a fish still in the dark. Like, you know, where I'm using the glow stick and I'm following glow stick and I can't see anything else. The rest of the time, the bites happen in the gray morning light. So, yeah. I hope that uh, clears things up a little bit for you. You know, for many years, I showed up way too late. I didn't realize people were standing in the dark for a very good reason. And uh, I'd show up, I thought it was early, you know, I'd show up at seven o'clock and by then that morning bite is already over. So thanks for watching. See you next time.